in DC. We're just hoping that you listen. Welcome to District Divided, a DC sports podcast. Just three of us today. I am Amit. That is Matt, and that is LC Lautaro Cabrera. It is good to see you all on deck today. I'm not touching the Washington football team. Those guys are a disaster. Two and five on the season. So we're going to open up with the All Blacks, New Zealand rugby team, destroying USA's rugby team at FedEx Field this past weekend. LC is going to walk us through a bit of what happened, and we're just going to have some general banter and discussion there. Then the Washington Wizards, the new look Washington Wizards are off to a pretty good start. Two and one to start the season. Pleasant surprise. You know, Russell Westbrook no longer there, but a whole bunch of new players. We're going to discuss each of them. And then the no hate debate. What is the best pregame ritual in honor of the Haka that the All Blacks perform before each of their matches? And then the State of the Union or DC Sports wraparound coverage segment. But we got to begin with Matt Regan. Where were you last week? I was in Michigan. How was being home? It was great. It was great being back. Uh, shout out, shout out to my dad, hosted me for a week. Uh, um, <laughs> back in Ann Arbor, had a uh, bachelor party the second week, went to the Michigan Northwestern game, shout out seven of Wolverines. Saw Cade McNamara on campus and uh, Aiden Hutchinson. That was kind of cool. I was uh, starstruck by these teenagers. Um, so that was, that was a good time. Uh, I saw the pod. Um, good work. Good work. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, how much did you sell your autograph to Cade McNamara for? Mm. I, I am not an autograph seeker, but actually I, I want to take the attention off me because, because Very I know we went through our agenda. I know we've, I know we've, we've approved this agenda, but can we talk about your cowardice and just not covering the Washington football team? Cause you don't want to, okay. because, because there are many fans that come into this to see the self-loathing for you not to cover it is not giving them that outlet where it's like misery loves company and you're not giving anyone that, that, that that opportunity to join you in your misery and you're really letting down all the fans you owe them that you can't just ride the highs and then ignore the lows how about this i go on a little rant and we call it a day on the washington football team yeah, and then we can it. move on okay let's do that all right the washington football team are two and five they lost to the green bay packers when they tried to give the way, game away to us that is the second time in as many weeks a team has tried to give the game to us the defensive line isn't playing well to begin the season they're finally playing well offensive line is playing well the whole time Taylor Heineke, to me, second coming. It kills me to know that he might not be. No, he's not. He's not the second coming. He is he's a backup that. quarterback. It, this is the lowest of lows for me because I was so high on him, but he just can't figure it out. Antonio Gibson seems to be hurt. The coaching staff seems to be blaming everybody but themselves. The ongoing Washington football team investigations are a joke. The Sean Taylor jersey retirement is still pissing me off to this day. I wake up and just get upset about it. It sucks. Everything about the franchise sucks. Now, if Dak Prescott gets hurt, I'm right back in. Because then all of a sudden, the division is up for grabs. We could make a magical playoff run. Ryan Fitzpatrick could come back. Maybe you throw in Kyle Allen. Who knows? But until then, what's the point? What is the point of this franchise? And Dan Snyder is just the worst owner on the planet. Yeah, go ahead, Matt. Seems like you want okay, to Okay, so 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 I feel for you. I feel for you. Okay. I'm sure you do. I'm not I'm not We would lose not, to the Lions right now. You're not gonna lose to the Lions. <laughs> Dude, That's a look, oh, okay. Um but the Lions do have seem to have a little bit more fight. Um so so I have a question to you. What would what would be a a and, and we don't work for injuries on this podcast, so I don't want to hear the Dak Prescott thing. But what would be an ideal rest of the season, assuming no major injuries happen? Like, what would be a good rest of the season for you that's reasonably, like, you know, that, that's reasonable, you know? Mm, okay. Um, well, so for me, the, the long shot is Deshaun Watson gets traded to Miami. And when that happens, we trade for Tua. Because we don't have the franchise quarterback on the roster. And we may as well see if Tua is. I'm not even saying he is. But it's worth rolling the dice on one more guy. That's what I would like to see. Because it's not Taylor. It's certainly not Fitzpatrick. And Kyle Allen, highly unlikely. So I would like to see another quarterback of a decent pedigree. And Tua's had a couple of nice games recently. Come in. And maybe he just needed the change of scenery. That would be great. Uh, outside of that... You want to see the younger guys do well. You want to see Jamin Davis continue to progress at middle linebacker. If he starts playing really well, you have the defensive line playing well right now. 
as well as a middle linebacker to anchor the defense. I think that would be really nice. Our first round pick this year, Sam Cosme, continue to play well when you do play. Uh, Brandon Scherf, you know, if we can sign him to a reasonable extension, I think that would be nice. But these are the things I'm talking about. Like, we're not going to the playoffs, you know, barring injuries. We're not even going to have a respectable record. So I would like to just see the younger guys play well so that we can establish that nucleus for when we drop in that quarterback. Ideally, we get the chance to roll the dice on a Tua or somebody before the season's end outside of the guys we have on our roster right now. Okay, so you're not going into like full tank to get like a top five pick no you want to win the games you still want your players to experience winning to experience the grit and determination and fighting through a game and grinding out a result because we're not going to blow anybody out so finding ways to win close games is sort of like what the chargers problem was last season and now you look at them and they're doing pretty well find ways to win close games so i would love to see a few of those i think it'd be great for the morale overall but so, that's about I mean, it. That's all we're talking about here. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the, the caveat to that is like they were losing because they had a good quarterback that was just being mismanaged sure. by a coach. Whereas, like, that's not necessarily the case here. Um, True. Good point. So okay, but still looking for the franchise quarterback. First and Heineke, not the guy. All right. Sorry, but Heineke, not the guy. No, all that right. pains me. But you're right. It, it had to be said. I tried to run away from it. He's not the guy. That is painful. All right. I think a lot of our viewers really appreciated that. I appreciated it. I know you did. (laughs) I certainly know you did. On to rugby. When you said I feel for you, I felt all of that. I really (laughs) appreciate that. On to (laughs) rugby. Hey, my team's 0-7. I just, you know. At least they're kind of fun, though. Like, Dan Campbell will, you know, he has great energy about him. And he seems to call. Dude, he tried to beat the Rams and (laughs) got off to a great start in that first quarter. They score. They get the onside kick. They fake a punt. This is all in like the first 10 minutes of the game, and it all worked. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I like Dan Campbell. He seems to get the pulse of it. I mean, I, I don't know if he's smart or not, um, but we'll see. Our, our roster's bad, so we'll, we'll figure it out. All right, fair enough. Elsie, uh, Elsie, let's talk about rugby. The yes. All Blacks came to town, and I saw the score, and I was thought it was a ass. typo. Uh, but why don't you go ahead and clear that up for us? The All Blacks played USA Rugby this weekend at FedEx Field. Go ahead. The floor is yours. Thank you. Yeah, so the, the scoring, if you don't know, it's similar to football where scoring the equivalent of a touchdown, which is a try, would be five points, and then the conversion is two extra points, which would be a total of seven. So the score was 104 to 14. Um, so a very, very one-sided game. The half was actually 59 to seven. So that told that story. But if you go even deeper, the first play was the try for the All Blacks. So USA kicks the ball, All Blacks receive it, do a couple of passes, and they're on the other side of the field, try. And uh, that was sort of the story for the first five to 10 minutes. It was just every time they had the ball, they scored. But at the same time, we nobody expected it. Uh, close game nobody expected the u.s to put up a a really good fight they also you know expected a little bit more than just to be losing by four tries on like the first 10 minutes but but fair that it's it's hard to play against these guys um i think to to put a little bit in perspective and and we were chatting a little bit about this before earlier today it's it's as if football like american football started to become popular in other countries and then to boost football in that other country, the NFL champs go and play like the local team. And they would score on every drive and they would sack the quarterback on like 50% of the plays on defense. Like it would just be such a domination. So it's, it's a similar thing. The, the amount of tradition and infrastructure that there is for rugby in all of uh, Oceania and, and all of the islands, the Pacific islands, but speci- especially in New Zealand and Australia is just cannot be compared to what, what exists here. However, I think it was, you know, the fans came to see New Zealand rugby, right? They didn't come to see a close game. They came to see these guys score tries. They saw a lot of that. Um, and you could also see these guys having fun. I mean, they were, they were playing loosely. Um, you know, they, they were following and sort of tracking all the time, which allows for more, uh, more tries and more continuation of play. They were playing at full speed. Like they were not sort of, you know, messing around. They were just 
having fun while while dominating the opponent. Now, to me, I think one of the surprising things uh, that was really interesting to see was um, rugby obviously has different positions and you can tell by the number on their backs. So unlike other sports, the number on the back actually determines the position you're playing. And numbers one, two, and three are the forwards, which are usually the big guys. In the scrum, they're literally the, the, the three guys in the front, big guys, kind of like, you know, in football, the, the guys who are in the, front, in the front line. So you would think these guys are gigantic and can't move very fast. Well, number three for New Zealand, <laughs> Moves like LeBron James. <laughs> like his agility is ridiculous. But I was looking at his stats. So LeBron is 6'9", and he weighs 250 pounds, okay? 6'9", 250. This number three for New Zealand, um, and his name is Angus Taaval. He's 6'4", so he's shorter. He's 275, so he's an extra 25 pounds than LeBron. So imagine somebody who is shorter than LeBron yet heavier and he's still all muscle and he's moving like a fucking gazelle. So it, it, these guys are absolutely unstoppable. They're amazing. It was a great talent to watch, um, but obviously not, a, not a close game. So this isn't even one of those things where we can necessarily, you know how we do this with soccer sometimes where we're like, Oh, well, if we just train LeBron, et cetera, right. to be a soccer player, then the following results could occur. Because it seems like number three is a tank at 6'4", <laughs> 275. So it would actually be a pretty reasonable matchup of LeBron James Physically. against this guy. Yeah. Um, and then if I heard you correctly, the analogy you used was it would be like an NFL team, NFL champions going and yeah. let's say the Netherlands started up a football or exactly. you know football league and the Amsterdam Falafels won and they exactly. just got obliterated by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Because, because you have to remember, the All Blacks can do this to like decent teams in, in the rest of the world. I mean, they'll have close games when they play Australia, close games when they play South Africa, but they'll beat Argentina these days by like 20, 30, 40 points. They'll beat Italy or England by 10, 20, uh, 30 points. So like the All Blacks dominate other good teams. So when you play against a team that's obviously, you know, a, a emerging, an emerging uh, sport in the country, then there's absolutely no chance. The keys also were small things that, that you may not notice. But if you look at the game, like all, all of the tries come from the U.S. either missing a tackle or doing the tackle softly enough that the player with the ball can offload it right before falling down. And so the play never stopped. It just continued. And you're just chasing. You're just chasing and these guys that are running <laughs> at a speed that you can't comprehend. Um, and so it, it just, there was never a chance for, for the U.S. To, to do more than just sort of try to chase from behind and then see if they could stop somebody. And that's just not a way to, to stay in the game. So, so comparing, and I'm I'm certainly a, <clears throat> a a rugby newbie. Like I think as a U.S. soccer fan, I think people always say, "Well, yeah. like, right, so when are we going to contend on the national stage?" And yeah, there are there are glimpses of that. Are there glimpses of that on the rugby stage, or just like it's like 1994 and we're showing now Clint Mathis to very much Ronaldo. exactly very much developing. If you look at the um, the major league of rugby, like a lot of the good sort of you know players in the teams are actually like australian or new zealand guys who are like here right kind of like soccer leagues in you know in the rest of the world sometimes have players from all over the world um and so there's definitely a long way to go um i do think that with a lot of sports and we talked about this in the olympics like the u.s has has this you know um high school and college level infrastructure of sports where there's so much organization that you can actually build something where, where, you know, kids have opportunities to play competitively, to have, uh, you know, coaching, uh, to have facilities, right? Like you can play rugby at a football field and those exist. And so like the, the opportunity is there. It's going to take time. It's going to, it's not going to be <laughs> not this, uh, not this World Cup, not the next World Cup. Um, but it, there's obviously an opportunity. Speaking of World Cup, the U.S. has to play um, against Chile, I believe, to qualify for this World Cup that's happening in two years, I believe. So there's, there's that also to, to be coming up for, for U.S. rugby. Is that like a, a sudden death game? Or, or not a sudden death, but it's a one-off playoff? It's actually two games. It's a qualifier. Um, let me really quickly Google the dates for that. But it's one game in the U.S. and one game in Chile. And it's the last slot of what's called the Americas qualifier. Uh, so that should be coming up. 
is this similar to like a Champions League style thing where it's two legs and it takes the aggregate score? Correct. Okay. Oh, that's yeah. that's pretty wild from the uh, it is. perspective. Especially the if you US, can lose by 90. Well, yeah. Well, the U.S. actually won the first game against Uruguay in the previous uh, phase, which was – this was a, a direct ticket to the World Cup. Won the first game by one point, then lost in Uruguay by like 19, and so ended up uh, being out. But – now they have to do the same against Chile, and uh, that's obviously going to be a, a different different game. Dang. Okay. That's pretty awesome. Thanks for the info. Um, I don't know if you'd know this off the top of your head. If you don't, that's totally fine. But Old Glory, yes. do we have any players on the national team or no? Uh, I think that there's a couple that have been uh, in and out. Yeah, I can't remember exactly, but following their, their Instagram accounts, and they do say, like, you know, good luck to our to our player who's going to the team um i mean the u.s rugby team is also i mean a, a lot of national teams you know for different occasions they'll play different players and and they're sort of as a building team like they have obviously a lot of sort of rotation or they're they're trying different players um you know there's there's not too many like u.s super established players that have like their absolute spot in the national team at least i don't, I don't think it is that way so um, it rotates a little bit, but the other thing too, is that I remember some games, they, um, you know, the national team would call a player from all glory and there was a game during the week and they just couldn't play for all glory. <laughs> so it wasn't, it wasn't like the, uh, like the soccer international breaks and whatnot. No, they sort of just, <laughs> just keep going. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Well, I certainly would hope that some of the Washington football team defense, uh, gets to practice with these guys, get some more tackling in there. You know, it, you know, the, there, there is some talk about um, rugby tackling and, and, and football tackling and sort of teaching rugby play, sorry, teaching football players to try to tackle more like rugby because in, in football, so many times you just thrust your body forward like a battering ram with like, like it's like an arrow that once it's been shot cannot be deflected anywhere. Whereas in rugby, there's still technique at the moment of wrapping the player, bringing him down because you actually have all to bring foreign in concepts to the Washington yeah. football team. Exactly. <laughs> so it's just there. So I actually have heard, I can't remember exactly what team, but I have heard of some, of some coaching staff who got some rugby players to, to come in in rugby. It is illegal to hit somebody without trying to wrap them. So if you just go and like hit them with your shoulder, that's actually like a very bad offense. You can get sent out for that. So you have to try to wrap them and you want to bring them down. Um, which if you think about like, football like so many times people go for chest to blast where in fact bringing somebody down would be just as good or better um because the play ends if i bring you down so i don't understand why not to try to do that i was thinking it about it a bit cool. more <laughs> it does not <laughs> it look as cool. cool but i was also Fair. thinking about it for the amount our offense is beginning to turn over they may as well learn to tackle too because otherwise we're just giving up pick sixes <laughs> and fumble sixes all day i'm so depressed about this fucking team <laughs> Um, did you, I, feel you, I feel you, man. <laughs> did you manage yeah. to get the USA Chile dates? Uh, no, hold on. I was, I was talking uh, about the tackling, but Dude, I will get them to you before the end of the episode. Perfect. Also, perfect. when Matt says I feel you, it, I don't know what feelings he has. I know Just he has euphoria, feelings. But sure. right, I don't know if it's happiness. The ones What's I'm the, not feeling, he is now feeling. What's the no. German word? Isn't there like a German word when you like – you rejoice in somebody else's asshole like, disgrace. Yeah, it's German. <laughs> no, I remember it because uh, when when uh, Trump got COVID, he tweeted it, and it was like the the most liked tweet in like history of oh, like, his entire oh, account. Gosh, it's like a word because we were all like, "Oh yeah, <laughs> we like that." No, I was thinking like Trump or something like that. That's not it. I, <laughs> I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't remember. <laughs> Um, all right. So while you, while you look that up, uh, thank you for telling us about the all blacks and the one Oh four to 14. I seriously thought that was a typo, but yeah, I guess it's true. They, they won by zero. It's just the zeros in the middle <laughs> <laughs> with the nine preceding it. All right. So a 90 point loss for USA rugby. Hey, let's talk about the wizards though, because we've gotten off to a pretty good start. When you look at recent franchise history, we don't win our opener very often. And then mm -hmm. we get off to a slow start. So this is refreshing. And this is nice. Spencer Dinwiddie had a really nice game against the Indiana Pacers when Bradley Beal was out. Montrez Harrell, who we had talked about being a potential fan favorite, got MVP chance in the very first game at Cap 1 Arena. Got a tech for talking to Drake and then Nick Nurse. 
told the NBA to give him his money back or if they weren't going to, that they should get Nick Nurse as well. And then when one of the reporters was talking shit to Bradley Beal about his shooting, Montrez Harrell took over and said, we roll with this guy. He took no bad shots. We got out of here with a dub. That's all we got time for, folks, and we left. This team is surprisingly tight-knit considering how many players there are. So Harrell, KCP, Kyle Kuzma looks transformed right now. He's playing great. And, of course, Spencer Dinwiddie, who we'd mentioned in the backcourt, he's playing really well. Aaron Holiday, Corey Kisper getting a few minutes here and there. It's fun right now. It's fun right now. Elsie, what have your thoughts been on the opening three games for the Wizards? Yeah, I agree. I think it's fun. And, you know, to an extent, when I, when I was talking last time about trying to, trying to focus on the process and on the playing more than on the wins, like that mentality also takes out the pressure, right? And, and you sort of, you get to allow yourself to play, just try to do your thing and try to play comfortably and, and, try to do the thing that the coach asks you to do, even if it doesn't come up with the exact result that you wanted every time. So I think it's been fun. I, I, the way that I saw these three games, I am more encouraged by the win, a good one in Toronto, and then a grindy win against the Pacers, than I am discouraged about a loss against the Nets away with Bradley Beal coming back and, and missing like, most of his shots i think he shot something like 30 percent or 35 percent from the field so like i'm more encouraged by those good results than i am like disappointed or discouraged by by the one uh the one loss and the other thing with this team is look they just got together honestly like thinking up thinking in basketball terms they just got together new coach new system they can only get better, right? Like they're going to get to know each other. They're going to get to understand the system. The coaching staff is going to understand the players better and who to play when and in and, and what moments require certain players. So I think, you know, it's looking, it's looking promising. Uh, it's looking like if this is the baseline, then, hey, that's encouraging. Hopefully they, they can continue to play with that sort of looseness and, and feel like they, you know, they're not trying to win a title this year. They're just going to try to get better. And so use that play with it so I'm, I'm liking it and there's so many games that you know they're gonna they're gonna get used to each other by the end of the season for sure yeah and a couple more positives brad currently shooting 21 percent from three that's not going to last the whole season so he's only going to play better moving forward which is going to be great and rui hachimura hasn't played yet he is going to come back now we don't know when but he is going to come back and he is going to be a key contributor to this team nice to see denny avdia with a couple nice defensive possessions here and there and then the scoring is spread, right? So Beal, 21 points per game. Dinwiddie at 19. Montrez Harrell at 15. Kyle Kuzma, 14. Gafford, 9. It's everywhere. It, I really, really like that the scoring is spread, which means if someone has an off night, for example, like Brad, then Dinwiddie can take over. Or then KCP can have himself a good game. Or Kyle Kuzma, who, again, to me, looks very, very good. It's early days, of course. But to Elsie's point, when the pressure drops when the expectations are lowered because you don't have the superstar that is Russell Westbrook, who is kind of struggling right now in LA. Similar story to how he started with the Wizards. It just makes things easier. It makes the atmosphere more light and you can just enjoy yourselves a bit more. So Matt, obviously we're enjoying ourselves with the expectations being a bit lower with the new team, the new depth, stuff like that. I want to know based on the very little we've seen so far, are you still thinking uh, this team ultimately not going to be that good probably like 10th 11th something like that i'll be honest i haven't watched a game yet um but with that with that i would say uh yeah, it's too early to see it's too early to see um i guys no, I, I still don't see enough in this you know just in the roster and this team of, of players to be any higher than the seventh seed um i don't think that and i don't think they'll make the playoffs this year that's my claim okay so We'll dollar bet that, of course. I will say they do make the play. Does that include the plan? Hmm. Um, I think they will finish outside of eight at the end of the regular season. Um, okay. They so may like, come in nine, ten, you know, or they may come in. I, I consider seventh getting into the playoffs, even if you lose the plan tournament. Is that fair? You consider <laughs> no. So that's you're not sure. that's, that's not the that's not the rule anymore. <laughs> All right, fine, fine, whatever. I, I don't think they'll make the playoffs with the plan with this with, the with this with the plan. All right, so fuck. They'll either come in seventh and choke, or they'll come in. <laughs> they'll come in tenth and 
<laughs> just last I, win. I, I will say yeah. that. So it's so seven plays ten, eight plays nine, right? So like right. the tenth team in the East. Come on, man. Oh wait, wait. Like, Actually, guys. hang on. Uh, I'm thinking about that. Is it seven plays eight? Just, I think it's yeah. seven plays eight. Yeah. And then and if the loser, uh, loser yeah. will host. Yeah. That's what it Number, is. And nine the winner of ten, nine versus ten. Oh, okay, nine okay. wins, they get to play the loser of seven, eight. That's what you're it right, is. You're right, right, right. Okay. Yeah, that's that's not the, the way so we'll smoke. Okay. We'll smoke nine or ten <laughs> if, we, if we're over there. Too deep. Too deep, baby. And then we'll just go to some team that's on a one game losing streak and just rock them. We're good to go. I get into the playoffs. I, I can't remember if it was, uh, if it was you, Amit, or, um, or Kadeen who talked about the Bulls as being the sleeper team, but Jesus. It wasn't me. I, I, I was talking about the Knicks. It was, um, okay. it was Kadeen talking about the Bulls because they made a number four of... 4-0. No, like they're looking good. <laughs> he was right. He had the oracle. Dude, you know what's bad? When Lonzo Ball is throwing up oops to Alex Caruso and they're having a great time. Like that had thousands of retweets for good reason because they turned into the Globetrotters with these sightings. I don't know what's going on, but Chicago Bulls fans must be over the moon right now. It's pretty Amazing. cool. The NBA has been off to a great start. Yeah, so far, honestly. Fun. And no Ben Simmons so far. No Ben <laughs> yeah. Simmons. Matt, would you trade for Ben Simmons still? Ooh. I know you're high on him. Uh, uh, for who? Well, okay. So would you take <laughs> Ben Simmons on your team? Let's start yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. I would take Ben Simmons on my team. What if he doesn't want to practice? <laughs> I know it's still take him on the team. Uh, I mean, he's making a lot of money. That, that part is, is unfortunate. Right. Um, so factor that in. But yeah, I, I would still take Ben. I still think Ben Simmons is a, you know, I think with the right coach and city, he could be a, I still think he is a top 40 player in the league. And I think with the right coach, you come system, up he could number 40. <laughs> well, better than top 50. <laughs> <Just> uh, <quick. laughs> and, uh, I, I think on most teams, he would be the second best player. That's how I came up with top 40. Okay. Um, oh, okay. The, okay, I like that. How, how does the money, the money thing work in terms of like, because I know he was like fined for not like uh, going to practice, right? Like, yeah. so is that's he still now counts still against the cap. getting yeah, paid? Yeah, that still counts against the cap. Not, okay, yeah. okay. But, but is he getting paid for not playing? Or is it, hey, you're not, you're not choosing to play, therefore we can fine you? He's getting really paid less, I think, is, is what it is. Okay. He, you can't get fined more than what your your contract sure. says, but you, I think you can get fined. I'm sure the 76ers up. are trying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tax that um, shit. Yeah. Speaking of NBA, they got their lawyers off, working on that right now. Pistons yeah, off to a tough start. Owen 3, Cade Cunningham still hurt. It's been a disappointing, but you know what? I mean, obviously, it's, it's better than being Owen 3 with Cade. So just kind of, but it's, it's been tough. Jeremy Grant's hurt. Hopefully, he's not hurt too, for too much longer. It's kind of hoping we'd be like off to a good start and potentially pushing, you know, for a playoff spot. I, that's not going to happen. So, will the Wizards finish above the Pistons? Yeah, yeah, they okay, will. So you're even lower on the Pistons than you are the Wizards. Yeah, yeah, but we're we're on the come up. That's that's why I'm not on the. I, th- Based I think on t- what? We just had the number one overall draft pick, Kid Cunning. Right, and he, he's hurt, ah. so we don't know what he looks like yet. <laughs> We know what he looks like. It's like we've never seen him play. Well, I've like, seen what he was, looks like. Was a prospect. Okay. That. We've yeah. seen a picture. Um, yeah. And, and then our last year's draft class of Sadiq Bay and Killian Hayes, you know, um, Hayes Isaiah Stewart, good. they're all kind of, you know, working out. You know, we'll see. Killian Hayes kind of, he's like a poor man's Ben Simmons. Uh, <laughs> which, Have you seen you know, how thin he is? What are you talking about? <laughs> he's a point guard who doesn't shoot or want to score much. So that's, that's a bit oh, of an issue. Respect. But, um, yeah, outside of that, I, I, I think there are some promising pieces that, that we're, and we're just young. We're a young team, no, right? which, which you would not describe about the Wizards. You have, you have some nice pieces. A uh, bit of a quick follow-up. Are we just calling anyone a poor man's Ben Simmons when they refuse to shoot? <laughs> yeah, a point guard that doesn't score. Poor man's <laughs> Ben Simmons. Yeah, kind of. I mean, because okay. Ben Simmons is the best a point guard can do without scoring. So that's right. so that's but unfortunately a big part of the game. He's like a great yeah. defender, good dribbler, pretty good passer. Uh, he just doesn't score, which is unfortunately a huge part of the game. Well, I mean, then I'm a poor man's Ben Simmons because no, I'm, be a, point I'm a point guard because of my height, and then I can't shoot. score anyway. So boom. yeah, yeah, but you can't defend. You don't know that's that. not. Have that you was not seen LC on the court. 
that was not in the definition. <laughs> also, LC can guard. I'm the right now, I think player. I would, I I would call you a poor man's Ben Simmons <laughs> based on that right. definition. Uh, Fine. Yeah. <laughs> Your poor man's Ben Simmons. I'm going to get a shirt, the new jersey mean. in the back. Fair enough. I, I feel like this was a wizard segment, but this went all over the place. I really yeah, enjoyed it. Um, <laughs> anyway, so still waiting for Cade. I'm not making any judgments on the Pistons season until I see Cade. Last Ben Simmons question. Cade for Simmons straight up right now. Do you do it? Get out of here. Yes or no? No. You haven't even seen. Oh, well, we know what we look. We know what he looks like. <laughs> Are you kidding me? No, that is the most disrespectful one, question I've ever heard. <laughs> you're one of like six people that are still high on Ben Simmons. I just wanted to check if he had tremendous value or just some value. I said he's a top 40 player in the NBA. We should have the first overall draft. Pick. You think Cade's already top 40? No, but he will be. He no, projects okay. to be a top one player in the NBA. He projects to be the best, <laughs> <laughs> the best player in the no. NBA. <laughs> no, but like I think a number one overall draft pick, you, you project them to be a top 10, 15 player at some point yeah. in their career. Yeah, yeah, no, I was doing doing that more to troll and just tease. But uh, no, Kate Cunningham, I do think is going to be a really, really good player. All and he can aside. shoot. Okay. So he already he cannot does be shoot. A poor, he already cannot be a poor man's Ben Simmons. He does he shoot, shoots. and he helped Oklahoma State beat Baylor. Uh, you know, reigning champs from last season in the tournament, the uh, Big Twelve tournament. So he's he's definitely got some stuff to him. He's he's going to be a really, really good player. I agree. I also would not trade Kate for Simmons. I also just wouldn't trade for Simmons. I think mentally he's just not where he needs to be. And I do like, uh, Elsie, what you were talking about with the chemistry that's going to develop with this team, Wes Ansel Jr. The very first game against Toronto, what, what was the last time we gave up 83 points or whatever it was? Insane. I love, no. the, I love the new attitude. Last season, every game we did win was like 140 to 132. So, no, <laughs> this is not normal. Oh my gosh. Uh, so Elsie, before we move on to the no hate debate, what is your, now that you've seen, you know, three games very early understood. Uh, but what is your sort of floor ceiling thoughts on the wizards this season? I mean, I wouldn't change it too much. I mean, I think that, you know, if you're thinking of ceiling is like everyone's playing at their best, they develop more chemistry and Bradley Beal goes off, right? Like that, I'm thinking like, what, what is the ceiling? Like what's the best case scenario? I still think that would be like a, fifth or fourth place uh on the east obviously the floor you know you can go as low as, as, as you <laughs> yeah it can be horrible um but i think that that if all of those components happen then that would be an amazing best case scenario season and so that's why i'm sort of you know thinking like mi the middle of it so the reasonable expectation perhaps if you wish is to land somewhere around the play-in tournament um and then what happens at that point you know, we're 80 games away from that. And it's a one game if you're in the playing tournament. And it's just impossible to predict. That's just, you cannot know what's going to happen. You don't even know who you're going to play. So at that, at this point, it's just, it would make no sense to predict that. It's totally fair. All right, cool. Well, no, thank you for that. Uh, very fun discussion around the Wizards, Ben Simmons, Cade, the Pistons, etc. And now we're going to move on to the no hate debate this week. It's best pregame ritual again in honor of the haka that is performed by the All Blacks. Uh, Elsie introduced this topic, so Elsie, we're going to lead off with you. What is your favorite or best pregame ritual? Yeah, and I'll I'll tell you a little bit more about the haka too. So if you haven't seen this, um, go on YouTube, search for it. H A K A All Blacks. They they do it before every international game. It's a, it's an amazing experience to see it. Um, a lot of people have confused it with like a war dance because they are you know doing very intimidating sort of movements. But it's actually um, I was reading a little bit about it. It's actually like a traditional Maori dance. Maori are the indigenous people of New Zealand, and they do it for like uh, they do it for distinguished guests. Uh, they do it like in funerals. They do it in in celebratory. Um, occasions. So it's sort of like uh, just something whenever there's an event that requires certain, you know, honor or that, that is of, of big importance, they'll, they'll do that. So uh, really, really interesting to watch and, and amazing to, to see it on the field. But switching to, to what I'd like to, to see, this is not so much my favorite as one that I've seen so many times. And I'm always like, why do they do that? Um, which having played soccer my whole life, it's when the subs come in and they enter the field with the triple right step on the field. Like they, they hop on one right leg, you know, because they think that stepping in with the left one is bad. FYI, like that's, that's the superstition. And then they do like a hundred of these, you know, like uh, the name of the father, the son, the Holy Spirit. 
And at the end of the day, maybe they put their hands up, also pointing at God for somebody. I don't know what they're doing. But it's such a, an interesting ritual that every single player, um, that's not true, not every player, but so many players do. And my question, which I posed to you a little bit earlier, but my question is, here's where the debate maybe can come in. If two subs, one for each team, come in at the same time, and both players do the same ritual, including the religious ritual, do they cancel each other out? Do bo- does God give the same amount of luck to both players? Matt, why don't you go ahead? I, I have a very clear answer, I feel. Go ahead. I actually have a question for LC. Okay. Go. go. You hate Jesus? <laughs> Oh man, I do not hate Jesus now. I never met the guy. <laughs> <laughs> that was a perfect response. <laughs> and, all right, I'm on to you. All right, so <laughs> here's my thinking: is this is where karma comes in, right? So if mm. you if you had a great week, just overall being a human being, if you went to confession, if you did all those things, right? Then I think it is totally reasonable to assume that while God does indeed love everybody. He's going to do a little something extra for that guy because that's going to encourage the good deeds. That's going to encourage it's like keeping, keeping track. Oh, yeah. He, okay. He, he's got to keep track. I'm sure he <laughs> keeps or she or it, you know, whomever. Keeps track. In my opinion, totally keeps track. So does it cancel each other out? It could. Depends on depends the day. Depends on their week. Time will tell. <laughs> but certainly depends on the week, in my opinion. I think it goes to the better, okay. the good Samaritan, if you will. What about the whole right foot thing so if you come in with the right foot but you only take one step is that less good luck than if you take all three of your first steps the right foot? Quick Why little dynamic it? stretch and you're ready to roll baby but I you're only stretching one leg because it's only the right one so why not you, you, no you, you see how left? many people use their left very few <laughs> they're using their right and their right only that's what they're using why i'll be honest i've never seen I, i've never seen the right foot thing are you oh, serious? Dude, these no man. A lot of a lot of players do that. A lot of these, like for okay, I, I could I'm I am stereotyping. I feel no, like no, a lot of it. the South American smaller players yeah, 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 tend yeah. to do it for some reason. Where they hop on three and I, but then I know they're good because then the moment <laughs> they do that, I'm like, oh damn, dude, this dude's got sauce to his game. Kiss like me. I already I mean, know that's coming. I think I think a better question is like, what happens if someone did that in like our games? <laughs> well, that's just just a dick move. You're not making any money playing rec soccer so like that's a bit much that's not they're not playing for the money that's true you play for the love but i feel like like, need jesus that's a good point but i don't think you need the three like hop at that point have you seen anyone have you seen anyone when they get subbed in our leagues do the do the yes i have seen you have yeah i i I don't i mean i don't really look at other teams closely when they're subbing in like i don't think i've ever seen you're too locked in yeah, no, I get that. I get that. Locked great in. players are just locked in. I'll give you that. <laughs> so you give me that. There. There what you if you so yeah, well, you, think the thing is, Matt, you don't realize you do it? I think you're so locked in, you haven't seen yourself do that when you come on the field. <laughs> well, first of all, I've never su- I've never subbed in. Okay, I've never been a sub in my just life. Perennial starter. Wow. <laughs> okay. Never had to hop. And if I get well, subbed out, I go home. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if I just said always spirit, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Yeah, I never think about coming back. For the car you know how embarrassing that is safe. to come in. <laughs> you know how embarrassing that is to come in. I would never do that. Anyway, well, next time, next time you call me to sub, I will definitely not do it now. I'll sub. I'll <laughs> sub for a team. But like if I am a sub, I'm a substitute starter. Is what I am. I'm not a substitute <laughs> substitute. Right. Well, you always make that very clear in the text when I ask you to play. You're like, well, I mean. There's no bench, right? Or if there is, I'm certainly I'm not on it. And I have to say yes, whether that's true or not. And then you show up. It's the rule. Gonna, I get it. No, I understand. Very I'm going to go in with three steps on my left foot today. I can't wait to see that. I, can't, I might even put it on and post-editing, add it to this at the very end <laughs> of the video. That would be something. Okay. So you got the three, the three hop step, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. For me, I don't, I don't know if it's if it classifies as a ritual, but when the Chilean national anthem is played, whenever it's the World Cup, they play the song and then the song stops, but they keep going along with their fans for another 40 seconds. Uh, And I tell you what, I get goosebumps every single time they do that because the fans are incredibly passionate about it. The players are all singing, all of them. There's not a single one that's quiet. I know we talk about Messi sometimes. He's quiet during the night. You're not seeing that with the Chileans. They're belting this out. 
And when that track turns off and they go for it, I've literally watched those YouTube videos where I'm like, God, that is something so, special. I really, really like when that happens. So what, what happens is that, so Argentina actually has a, like, not a similar thing in terms of keeping singing, but the actual Argentinian anthem has like an intro that's instrumental that's as long as like the full US anthem. And then there's like a sung part that's like another two minutes. So like, obviously for games, they have these weird abbreviated versions. And so if you play the actual Argentinian full anthem, like players will get cold. <laughs> it's just it's too long, it's not gonna happen. Not even in, in like a home games, we don't even do that. Um, and so I, I assume, I actually don't know, but I assume that it's a similar thing with the Chilean one where they, for, for time reasons, they probably play an abbreviated version and they're like, no, that's not it. So yeah, that, that, that's a cool one, I like that. Yeah, I just love it. Anything that gives me goosebumps like that, really, really cool. Um, Regan, what about you? Any pregame ritual that comes to mind for you? Um, nothing like, nothing that I thought was crazy. I did, um, what was like the, like in, in the NBA, I think what Kevin Garnett did like the headbutt thing to the back. I thought that was kind of cool. Doing what he did like his pull-ups. Um, I always liked, uh, team intros in, in the NBA, especially as just like a starting five and it's a big deal coming in. The Pistons, yeah. when they were on their run, had a, had a huge, like our PA guy was like kind of a local celebrity. Um, so I would say that and I do like in the NBA, I kind of like it, a formal like intro, lights off, give yeah. a player a shine, kind of skate up. You know, if it's the NHL, they're skating up, they're doing like the hair flip, um, <laughs> you know, all that. So I, I, I really do like the pregame. Pregame intros, I think, are, are something I'm a fan of. I like that. Uh, speaking of pregame intros, this isn't necessarily, it's not a ritual. This was a one-off. But when Ray Lewis retired, or it was his like last home game with the Baltimore Ravens, you guys should check that video out. I can just link it below. It is so cool because <laughs> you don't even realize how many incredible players they have on that defense. And they're going one at a time, and the announcer is there, and the Ravens fans are going nuts because it's Ray Lewis's last game with them. And... Then you see like Haloti Nada come out. You're like, damn, they had Haloti Nada. And then and then you see Terrell Suggs come out. You're like, holy shit, they had Terrell Suggs. Then Ed Reed. And Ed Reed is like quieting the crowd down. And he does this thing where it's just like, Ed Reed is such a boss himself. And he's saying, quiet, quiet. Ray is about to come. Like, save your noise for him. And then Ray comes out. That is also another sort of goosebump inducing moment. I, I thought it was really, really cool as well. I can link that to this video. Go ahead, Matt. I would also say Virginia Tech and her Sandman is a, is a sick pregame song. So I would also, I would also <laughs> say that if you haven't seen that intro, I didn't go to Tech or anything, but that is, that is a, that is a, cool. that is a sick it. intro. Yeah. No, that's I, I, I really like the, uh, yeah, the NBA pregame introductions. I, I do wish, obviously, it's time to sell ads, so they're not going to do it. But like, I wish we could see that on TV because you'd really only get it if you're, you know, if you're there or if you have one of those weird like NBA, like, I don't know, it's like league pass or like where you actually have the camera, you know how there's like an option right. that you can like be on a camera and not the actual ads or whatever. But I do wish you could see that more. Like, I feel like we, I don't really know how, how a lot of the players are introduced. Actually, um, one last one that I thought of in terms of just pregame intros is uh, your Detroit Pistons, Matt, when they were, you know, when they were in the NBA finals, because that's when you get to see them, right? During the NBA finals and they had Chauncey Billups and they go, but Billups, like the, the PA announcer was so cool. I remember that having a pretty distinct, uh, you know, place in my memory banks for whatever reason. But those guys with Ben Wallace, Rashid Wallace, Rip Hamilton, it was yeah. really fun seeing those player intros done at the palace. I thought those were really cool. Yeah, that was awesome. Um, they would usually do it to final countdown by Europe, but then they also would throw in a little bit of uh, Bob with the Bob at Kid Rock. <laughs> so, you know, two ends, two ends of the spectrum. Yeah, no, always fun when teams get creative. Any final uh, pregame rituals that we like or just anything to shout out? LeBron's power. That is iconic. Oh, yeah, that, that is absolutely iconic. Can't go without <laughs> mentioning that in this segment. Did you see the um, – I think there's like a little, a little clip from – I think it was one of the all-star games that Steph Curry was uh, like right behind LeBron when he did it. He was like, oh, I, I never seen this this close. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> I did not see that. <laughs> it was pretty cute. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. 
<laughs> All right. Well, that's going to conclude the no hate debate. Uh, it was best pregame rituals or just, I guess, pregame intros or rituals that we have enjoyed in the past. Um, and now we're going to conclude today's episode with the State of the Union, your DC Sports wraparound coverage segment. We'll begin with the Wizards again, two and one to start the season. Pleasant surprise. Montrez Harrell getting MVP chance at home. Kyle Kuzma looking like the transformed player that he currently is. And Rui Hachimura still needs to join the team. So lots to be excited about while we still maintain the low expectations. And up next, four games against two teams. Tonight, it's at the Boston Celtics at 7.30 p.m. Then tomorrow, at home against the Atlanta Hawks at 7 p.m. Then the Celtics come here on Saturday at 5 p.m. And then we go to Atlanta on Monday at 7.30 p.m. Why it was scheduled that way? Not really sure, but it is. Um, And all those games can be seen on NBC Sports Washington. The Caps, second in the Atlantic Division and without a regulation loss through six games, four wins, two OT losses. Alex Ovechkin still on fire. Seven goals through six games. He might. Matt, I don't know if you know this off the top of your head. Alex Ovechkin might be leading the NHL in goals scored right now. He yeah, he does. A, unbelievable. I think he's he is on fire. Um, just coming out. I mean, the whole team has been scoring a ton. Um, Connor McDavid also on fire. But um, yeah, Ovi's doing doing the damn thing. Seven goals in five games. I think uh, we'll see. Uh, hopefully, the Wings can shut him out tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, he is just something else. The ageless wonder. Let's see if he can keep it going. And like Matt said, the Detroit Red Wings come to town tonight. So at the time of this recording, it'll now be tonight at 7 p.m. Then the Coyotes take us on this Friday at 7 p.m. We conclude by traveling to Tampa Bay to play the Lightning on Monday at 7 p.m. All those games can be seen on NBC Sports Washington. Uh, LC, did you want to quickly give us the rugby update about the USA Chile when the games are played? Yeah, so that qualifier, uh, the, both games will happen in July of next year. The World Cup is in September year. of 2023. And so uh, we we'll obviously don't have a, a date yet. They're, they're just not in the ballpark of July. July. Okay, and both those games would occur in July. So it would be like yeah, one game, two weeks like, later. Exactly. They happen like a week from each other, I think. Okay. Okay, sounds good. So July of next year, USA Chile, World Cup qualifiers. Um, on to soccer. DC United. Whew. Three games left in the season, and we lost to both New England and New York City FC last week. The New England result, a hey, 3-2, you're at home against the MLS's best team. It's understandable. The New York City game, we were down 3 nothing in like the first 10, 12 minutes. Uh, it finished 6 nothing. That was one of the worst games from D.C., definitely in the Lozada area, but in a long time long time this includes all of ben olsen's tenure it was a bad result but what it does is it leaves us in ninth place okay and the top seven in the east make the playoffs so we're two points back with that final playoff spot and there is good news because tonight we play against the new york red bulls who are the team that are two points ahead of us in the standings I'll be at the game, so I'm looking forward to a mid-game or mid-week playoff atmosphere. Um, it is at home, so if you guys are interested and in looking for something to do, definitely go to the game at Audi Field. It's awesome. It should be a blast. So that game is happening tonight at, I think, 7 p.m. And then also we're playing the Columbus crew who have had a bit of a down year, so we should be able to beat them at home on Saturday at 7.30 p.m. Both those games are at home. The Columbus game is the home finale and we would love to see you out there supporting dc united but you can also see the games on dcunited.com on to women's soccer the washington spirit have already clinched their playoff spot we said so last week and we finally play the final game of the regular season on sunday halloween at 2 p.m against the houston dash the houston dash desperately need the win the spirit actually have an outside chance at securing a first round bye So it is very important that the Spirit do win to give themselves that chance. And again, the game can be seen on Paramount Plus, but it's at home. So if you want to go to the game and celebrate one of professional sports' most resilient teams, honestly, for all they've been through this season, definitely go check it out and then just go trick-or-treating directly after that from Audi Field. Start there. Should be a lot of fun on Sunday. And then... The Washington football team, two and five. I already gave you essentially my eulogy for the season. It is just a disaster. Two and five. They play at the Denver Broncos at 425 p.m. 
KDOT and I will do the Washington football team preview show if we can get through our collective depression. We will figure that out in the next day or two. If we do, that'll be released Friday at 2 p.m. And that's going to conclude today's episode of District Divided, your DC sports podcast. Thank you for listening. I am Amit. That is Matt back from Michigan. And that is Elsie Lautaro Cabrera. Thank you guys so much again. And we will see you next week. Take it easy. Happy birthday to Diego on Saturday. Happy birthday. Oh, happy birthday, Diego. <laughs> Adios. <laughs>